On this episode of Under the Radar Michigan, we're back in Grand Rapids for a food basket that feeds tons of hungry children. We'll also taste the most fun thing you can make with apples and stay at a hip new place right downtown. Then we dream up a great breakfast and take you on a portable party that's powered by people. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The Komen Race for the Cure series raises significant funds and awareness in the fight against breast cancer, celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. More info at Komen.org. And by The Brides Project, a charitable bridal shop specializing in high-quality donated gowns. All proceeds help families touched by cancer at the Cancer Support Community of Greater Ann Arbor. Learn more at thebridesproject.org. And by Big B Coffee, celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound available in store and online. Franchise info available at BIGGBY.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar in Michigan. You know, every time I come to Grand Rapids, I find it harder and harder to leave. Until they ask me to. I'm going. I'm leaving right now. Yep. If you haven't been to Grand Rapids in a while, you'll be amazed when you get here. When it comes to art, food, shopping, new business, and entertainment, this place has it all. It's a modern cosmopolitan city with a great history and a brilliant future. It's also a very livable city where you can work, play, and stay right downtown. Grand Rapids is located on the western side of Michigan's Mid-Mitten, just 60 minutes from all points, one hour away. And speaking of staying right downtown, this time in Grand Rapids, we dropped anchor at a place called City Flats. It's an ultra-modern, extremely progressive, and very green boutique hotel that's right in the heart of the city. I got a chance to learn more about City Flats from marketing coordinator Jack Pifon. How do you define a boutique hotel? We define a boutique hotel as sort of, uh, they're smaller hotels. They're sort of different than most hotels. We have really attentive service, uh, less rooms than a mega hotel. Now every room is different, I noticed. Yeah, our hotel here in Grand Rapids has 28 rooms. They're all uniquely designed. So no two rooms are the same. Another neat thing about City Flats is that they're helping preserve one of Grand Rapids' great historical treasures. Now tell me about the, the ballroom in here, which is beautiful. Yeah. That used to be a bank lobby? It was. We just opened it up in the fall. We kept a lot of the original woodwork and marble. Um, we just kind of modernized some of the stuff and brought it in, and now we can do any sort of events in there. What's just neat about this hotel, it's kind of a historic preservation project, yeah. but it's also hip and funky and modern looking, yeah. and it's really eclectic. It's the kind of place that, you know, you walk into and it instantly it's just like, wow. I must be cool because I'm staying here. Yeah. I think eclectic's a really good word to describe it. We've taken sort of a normal hotel and flipped it upside down and something completely unique, um, something you're not going to find anywhere else. Plus the neat thing is it's right in the heart of the city, so you walk out yeah. and the restaurants and the shops, everything's right here. Yeah. This place is right for me. I wish I could move in. <laughs> Am I cool enough to stay here? Yeah, absolutely. You're being nice. <laughs> so if you're cool and progressive, you might want to stay at the City Flats Hotel. And if you're not, don't worry about it. Even I got a little cooler after staying here. And for me, that's hard to do. What kind of people spend hours working hard every day to help feed hungry kids? I'll tell you what kind of people. My kind of people. No matter where you live in the world, it seems there are always hungry kids not too far away. But thanks to one woman's dream and the hard work of dedicated and caring volunteers, that's changing real fast here in Grand Rapids. More than 10 years ago, Mary Kay Hoodhood heard a story, saw a need, and knew she had to do something about it. I'll admit it to you that 
When I read about what you guys are doing here, I got a little choked up. I mean, it's a simple concept, but to pull it off is a miracle. It's sad when you start thinking about why we're doing it. Yeah. You know, that there's so many people that can't stretch their dollars, that they can't feed their kids properly. And that's what's really our wrench. How did this whole thing start? Well, I was working at our local soup kitchen. So I was in the business of feeding people. I know how to feed people. So I had a woman who was volunteering, packing groceries, telling me that when she was done volunteering, she was gonna go over to the school on the west side where the principal had caught a little girl digging through the trash as to what she was doing and she was looking for food. So this gal that was a volunteer was bringing juice boxes over to donate to the school. And at the point that I met her, at three schools they could identify 125 kids that they knew were at high risk of not receiving an evening meal at home. You're feeding how many kids now? Close to 5,000. 5,000 kids don't go to bed hungry right. anymore because of you. That's outstanding. I'm getting choked up again. You're gonna, I know, you're gonna make me I know. Cry. <laughs> well, you know, and the thing about it is, I know that when I go to bed at night, I know I did the right thing. But we're doing a great job and we know it, but there's still schools that we haven't been able to get money to feed them and access to nutritional food. You know what else uh, amazed me is when we came in here, all the volunteers that come in here and donate their time and work hours help, you know, packing lunches, making food, because it's the right thing to do. And it's all because of you. Well, I don't know about that. People always say to me, thank you for everything, you know, and I say, yeah, me and an army of volunteers, I mean, we couldn't do anything without our great people who donate money, donate their time, donate their talent. We would, couldn't do any of it. You got the ball rolling, though. Yeah, because I could not sleep at night knowing that there were kids going to bed hungry. Bridget Clark Whitney is the executive director here, and she's a big reason why Mary Kay's small idea is making a huge impact in Grand Rapids. How long have you been with uh, Kids Food Basket? I've been with Kids Food Basket since September 2002. I was a senior in college. Mary Kay Hoodhood, our founder, she needed an intern. Really, she needed some free labor, and I needed an internship, so it was a perfect match, and we were able to work together that first year to create something that's both sustainable and makes an incredible impact every day. Well, somebody said, I think I saw this on your website, that uh, poverty is complicated, but feeding children is not. Right. And when you feed kids, they do better in school, they excel, it's better for their future, it's better for everybody's future. Absolutely. You know, when we first started this program, we had no idea how large it would get. But throughout the very first few years, what we learned was the real scope of childhood hunger. And we've grown because the need has grown. In fact, it would have been irresponsible not to grow. Where do you get all the volunteers that come in here? We make it very easy to volunteer. Our philosophy here is that everyone wants to make a difference. Everyone wants to change the world. But so many people just don't know how. So at Kids Food Basket, our expertise is in community engagement. We are really good at it. Each and every weekday and weekend day, we have over 175 volunteers who come through our doors or do volunteer work off-site. And they're all taking time, an hour to an hour and a half, sometimes a few hours, to make sure that kids are getting the nutrition that they need for proper brain development. These are kids who may live next door that are simply not getting enough food on a day-to-day -day basis. Where does all the food come from? Yes, that's very important. So about 50 to 60% of our food comes from Feeding America. So if you're not familiar with Feeding America, those are the big food banks that exist around the country. The major food vendors are able to ship all of their food to Feeding America. So this is overstock, things that are close to being outdated, um, any sort of donations from the major food vendors. Then organizations like Kids Food Basket can purchase there for approximately 16 cents a pound. So we're able to get about 50 to 60% of what we need there. We also have many local food vendors we have local farmers, and we have many food drives that are happening all over West Michigan for Kids Food Basket. It's a pretty striking image when we first came in here to see 
an assembly line of people mm -hmm. who just care, who are volunteering yes. to help feed kids. That's pretty impressive. It's really magic. I mean, it, it makes a huge impact every day. And there should be a, a, a kid's food basket in every town. There should be. There should be. And we're hoping that that's one of our pieces of our vision. Get to work. Thank you. <laughs> I tell you, being at Kids Food Basket is truly a wonderful experience. You can't help but feel good about what's happening here. And another cool thing is that local students decorate most of the sack dinners that go out to kids in need with personal notes of kindness. So it really is a true community effort. If this doesn't make you feel Michigan proud, I can't think of anything else that would. Let me ask you something. What's the most fun thing you can make with apples? Now, if you said apple pie, you gotta watch this segment. Hey, Jim, can I have this? Yeah, sure, Tom. Bonus. Meet Jason Lumman. He's the CEO, staff, and yep, chief bottle washer here at the People's Cider Company, a brand new business in Grand Rapids that's turning Michigan apples into a party in your mouth. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, professionally? Yeah. I uh, took possession of the space in May, and I've had my liquor license down for about six weeks. Uh, so you're literally just getting started. Just getting started, man. Oh, God, we caught you at the beginning. No, you're, 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 you're way at the beginning. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the first things you'll notice about the People's Cider Company is that there's not a whole lot of room for people around here. But hey, who says you can't start a big idea in a small space? What got you into making cider? Uh, my father-in-law. My father-in-law made cider. So, uh, you know, people... In Michigan, I've been making hard cider for, you know, 150 years, you know? So it's just that stuff and combining with, like our homebrew culture, man, has got all sorts of people making fabulous cider. So realizing that you could make it, that it is a local product, that I get my apples from 13 miles up the road, you know, and we just come right back here. Everybody's got the same area code on their phone. Um, what apples make the best uh, hard cider? Cheap ones. <laughs> Sp spoken like a true capitalist, <laughs> which reminds me, I, was, I heard you, you refer to yourself as a reluctant capitalist. What does that mean? You know, man, I mean, just it's, right now it, it is, I, we can say it's a one-man operation. I have a lot of help from a lot of my friends, um, so it is not totally a one-man operation, but um, I would have a hard time being somebody's boss. So if we got to the point that, you know, that I can't do all the work, then, you know, if somebody's going to put their back into it, then, then they should have an interest. You know, so I guess that's really what that's referring to. Yeah, and this isn't just the cider that we used to leave in the fridge and it got a no, few hundred. No, no, this is, uh, there's actually, I see barrels here. Yeah, absolutely, man. We, uh, happy uh, coincidence, but we ended up with uh, a number of bourbon barrels and, you know, always something I wanted to do. And with the small volume, it looks like everything's going through the bourbon barrels this year. The nice thing is it's not, I thought it was going to be sweet and syrupy, but it's not. It's a real mellow and you can taste the barrel in it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, that is, this one is done with a champagne yeast. Um, I started using champagne yeast because it's predictable to use, but uh, what it does is creates a nice, clean product. Um, apples themselves have a little more body than, than, say, the grapes do, so this makes a nice product. that It, it is very light, um, and so it allows it to pick up a lot of the flavor out of the barrel, a lot of the odor out of the barrel. And like you said, you're getting your apples locally, you're selling it locally. Right. And you're, are you from here locally? Are you I am, yeah, local yeah, everything's local, man. I'm a, I'm a East Town kid, so yeah, I mean, everything's within the local area, so definitely, man. I mean, that's really what this operation is about. You know, someday, maybe, will I have distribution on the east side of the state? I'd love to get it over there, but, you know, right now, this is just about Grand Rapids, so I'm only distributing it as far away as the orchard is. So I go 13 miles to the orchard, I'll go 13 miles from Grand Rapids, so that gets me here in my, my local area. Um, you know, you're not burning a lot of petroleum, you're, you're, you're keeping it small, and you're really giving it back to the people who, who are from here. So I said, you know, this is what Grand Rapids tastes like right here. I mean, your carbon footprint's low. Right. But your alcohol level's high. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna use that, can I use that? <laughs> There's something to be yeah. said for that. Does this go good with donuts, too? Yeah, I, I like donuts. So I'm sure it would. Uh, you know, everything goes with donuts. Goes with <laughs> right, donuts. Right, right, right. If you're drinking it in the morning, you should probably have a donut. Well, this is I've never I've never had um, cider like this before. I mean, I've had mead, I've had beer, I've had, but this is ex exceptional. Thanks, brother. Thank you very much. Cheers. Was I not supposed to drink it all right away? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry. So expect big things from Jason and the People Cider Company, because as he grows, it'll be good for the community, good for Michigan and a great addition to your next party. <laughs> Once again, I'm sure glad Jim drives. If you want to have breakfast, you could always go to my house. Not recommended. But if you want a really good breakfast, better go to Anna's house. Now, you won't find an actual Anna at Anna's house, but what you will find are some of the most inventive and downright delicious morning meal creations this side of the equator. 
Rihanna Motto and Josh Beckett worked hard to put together both a menu and a staff whose sole purpose is to get you to leave this place saying one simple word, wow. Why do you think this community gives your place so much love? Well, they just love the food here. Are you a trained chef or you just you just love food? I just love food. So how did you get in this business? Well, I've always been in the restaurant business. I started working here and this partnership just evolved into what it is now. It wasn't the plan and it just turned out to be this way and it's just amazing. It's been amazing for me. Well, what made you pick breakfast over like a lunch place or a dinner place? Well, I've never really loved to cook breakfast, so that's the strange thing. That's why so, uh, so many of my features and my specials are stuff you wouldn't normally see together. Right now we have a really um, amazing special feature sheet going on. It's got a lot of really cool stuff up. That's a problem. Once I start going, I can't stop. There's a lot of stuff on there, and I, I get carried away sometimes. So you're just somebody who loves food, who loves to experiment, loves to entertain. And I'm watching him eat over there. I'm, it's making me hungry. That looks so sur. Are you going to finish that? Oh, yeah. Darn it. <laughs> you always know a good place when you pull up and it's packed. And we pulled up this morning and we couldn't find a parking place. I mean, there's a lot of love for this place. It's awesome. There really is, people. We have a lot of loyal guests and they do. They just, they're really passionate about what's going on here. So tell me, why do you love this restaurant so much? Great food, great service. She's an excellent host and she's very creative with the uh, entrees that she puts on her menu. Do you realize you're talking to a straw? I do. It's pretty strange. Everybody wants to go to breakfast, and you're trying to find something that's new. And this place has new things every time you come in. They switch it up. It's inventive. It's new. It's different. My favorite is the beef tenderloin penny, and it's amazing. I'm just looking at the menu now, and there's something that I would never have thought of, and it's just delicious. You always be happy with what you choose to, to get here. It's never a disappointment. I would highly recommend it for anybody to come here. If they've never been here for the first time, it's very, very good. Well, it must be a year and a half, two years that I've been coming here, and it's, it's it's always enjoyable, so I'll, uh, I'll keep coming back as long as they let me, I'll put it that way. We just started coming here about four weeks ago, and it's our new favorite breakfast place. We come here all the time now. Did this place turn you into a foodie? I was already a foodie. I used to be a chef. So our big thing as a couple is we go all over the state and just looking at new restaurants, and this is right down the street from us, so it's perfect for us. You know what? We do the same thing. We drive around looking for good restaurants, too. You want to hang out with us? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> you can pay me, right? No, <laughs> they don't pay me. <laughs> well, you know us. It was time for another patented UTR taste test. And as Rianne brought out dish after incredible dish, we suddenly realized that the feeling was absolutely unanimous. And when all was said, and we were all done, what everyone told us was true. So what do I really have to say about Anna's house? <laughs> Simple. Wow. So what do you get when you combine people, pubs, and pedaling? You get a portable party that's pretty popular. Get ready for the Great Lakes Pub Cruiser. If you're looking for a powerful good time, this one's powered by people. Oh, and pub juice. Lori Ryan and her awesome pedal-driven contraption takes you from pub to pub, tasting some of the best microbrews Michigan has to offer. Well, you know what they say, time to get this party started. Oh my god. Pedaling already? Yeah. <laughs> can I ask you something? Can you talk while you're driving? Can I? Yeah, I do it all the time. Okay. <laughs> what uh, what made you decide to get into this crazy business? I saw this in Minneapolis and I just fell in love with it. I just was like, Grand Rapids is beer city and we need one. Well, well now what's the what's the, the program? You go from pub to pub. We can go pub to pub, we can go restaurant to restaurant. Alright, coast! Coast! Oh yeah. Oh, stopping at stop signs. Good and idea. Go pedal! <laughs> so you pedal from pub to pub. Pub, pub this, to pub, this, restaurant this. to restaurant. We can pretty much customize the tour to do just about anything you'd like to do. We have three established routes. One is the northwest side, which is what we're doing today. We have another one that is called the Arts District that goes kind of to the upper part of Grand Rapids. And then we have one that is called the Heart of Downtown, which does the downtown corridor. Right. Well, the, Coast! Coast! Well, the nice thing about this is you can actually work off your buzz between pubs. And it's like, it's socially healthy. Yes. It's physically healthy. And uh, I'm feeling the burn, but it's not from the beer. It is not. No. <laughs> This thing. You gotta get a high, it goes five miles an hour. Yeah? How long have you been doing this? 
We opened in 2012. Well, last year, April. So this is our second season. Pedal! Pedal! Well, time to head into our first stop for our first round of social lubrication. As if we needed any. So is this our first stop? And this is our first stop. This is O'Toole, so run in and get your party on. Woo! This is the easy part. <laughs> you don't have to fail, you just drink. <laughs> <laughs> and before we knew it, we were out the door, back on board, and on our way to the next pub. Hey. Hey. When you go from pub to pub, does this thing move slower and slower as the evening goes on? As the e the, the coming home round is always a lot slower than the getting to. It's probably a lot slower and a lot louder. Uh, much louder. Uh, how, how has the city embraced this? They love it. They love us. They, they've been very welcoming. We've had lots of city tour groups on, really? um, city officials on. The mayor opened us up, and uh, oh, so he's awesome. been very, very, very excited about it. Oh, when do we change gears? Because my legs are starting to burn. We, uh, we have only one gear on the pub. Uh, it's great. geared kind of low, but uh, and you can pedal as hard as you want, but you will only go five miles an hour. Hey, hey who's slacking off? I'm pedaling awfully hard. <laughs> suck it off. <laughs> no okay, fake I'll suck pedaling. It off. I also noticed that two of the seats don't have pedals. Yes, 10 people actually power the pub. Um, there are two non-pedal seats at the bar, yeah. and then we can put three to four, if they're tiny, in the back. Gotcha. <laughs> so this is people, people power! Yeah. People oh, power! Yeah. It, there is no motor, it is totally powered by the pedalers. And you get the, and you, well, you don't have to pedal, do you? I don't. She's not pedaling! <laughs> The Great Lakes Pub Cruiser is an absolute blast. It's great exercise, a fun way to sample local brews at cool pubs, and most importantly, an awesome way to hang out with fun friends. You pedal hard, you work hard, you sweat, you drink. It's like the perfect storm. It's awesome. We have a good time. You interact with other people, go to different places. So, wow. yeah, so that's fun. So you're going to pedal harder on the way back? Uh, I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was time to leave our last location and head back to headquarters. And to be honest, we were feeling no pain. Not even in our legs. I was going to ask you if there's onboard entertainment. But well, obviously there is. There is. <laughs> and I think as the as the pub crawl goes on, the entertainment gets a little more stimulating. It does. How many beers have you had? Three. Four. <laughs> carry, carry the one. <laughs> is this your first time doing this? It is. First time. You love it? It's great. It's great. Isn't it great? <laughs> so what's the, what's the best thing about this? Hanging out with your friends, socializing, getting a little workout in. Good point. Right, Good point. Good point. Good <laughs> point. <laughs> so, what's the third best thing about doing this? The third best? Oh, the company, I guess. The third best is the company? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Maybe. <laughs> that might be the fourth best. <laughs> so, I noticed you're sitting in a seat where you don't have to pedal. I definitely traded off. I already did my half, and I'm not letting the other people do their work. Right, because? This is a great time, but you know what? Sometimes you need a little break. Right, but be because you've been? Drinking? <laughs> I'm not really sure what you're asking me. So, if you haven't gathered by now, as usual, we had a ton of fun in Grand Rapids. We got to stay in a hotel way cooler than us, meet some amazing people doing inspiring things, sample some hard cider, eat a killer breakfast, and burn it all off with some great new friends. But best of all, they haven't even asked us to leave yet. Bonus. Hi, I'm Tom Dalton. Let me ask you something. Do you ever get confused watching this program? Well, don't feel bad. I get confused making it. So here's what you do. Go to utrmichigan.com. There you can watch episodes online. You can find out about all the cool places we've been and even jump to our Facebook page. So you shouldn't be confused. With me, it's a condition. Go to utrmichigan.com, and there you can find out everything you need to know. Except, of course, the winning lottery numbers. We're not allowed to give you those. <laughs> Seriously, we know the winning lottery numbers. Seriously? Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The Komen Race for the Cure series raises significant funds and awareness in the fight against breast cancer. 
celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. More info at Komen.org. And by The Brides Project, a charitable bridal shop specializing in high-quality donated gowns. All proceeds help families touched by cancer at the Cancer Support Community of Greater Ann Arbor. Learn more at thebridesproject.org. And by Big B Coffee, celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound available in store and online. Franchise info available at BIGGBY.com. Closed captioning for Under the Radar Michigan is made possible by Shamrock Travel in downtown Rochester. Shamrock Travel, providing complete travel services right here in Michigan for over 20 years. 